Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today is going to be talking about Nigeria's petrol subsidy regime. Um, of course, uh, news reports reaching us say that uh, uh, the country has spent about one trillion naira on petrol subsidy in just 10 months. This uh, morning, we are speaking with uh, Mr. Kayode Ekundayo, who is the publisher of Energy Times. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Ekundayo. Good morning, sir. All right, Happy so to join you, group. Absolutely, and compliments right. of the season. Yeah. yeah, same to you, sir. All right. So it, it, it's, it sounds very, very shocking, you know, seeing figures like that spent on petrol subsidy in just 10 months. Um, and I believe that every Nigerian should be worried, you know, at um, a, a, a report like that. But quickly share with us, you know, just a quick breakdown of why Nigeria is paying that much to subsidize petrol. Okay, thank you. Let me first of all tell you, state clearly that Nigeria is not any stock with the spending. During Jonathan uh, regime, we spent almost two trillion on fuel subsidy. This one for ten months is not to me. It's not uh, so high. And if you remember during Jonathan era, we have a, a challenge of a, a increase, you know, fake, fake receipts, billing that is not even necessary. You know, you remember the court cases that immediately after he left. So this time, I don't know. Uh, Paying this amount to me is not that high. But let me say this: Nigeria will continue to pay for subsidy. The, the next when we have full functional refinery. Can you hear me first? Yes, way? yes, go ahead, please. Yes, Nigeria will continue to pay for subsidy until when we have fully functional refinery. The one the federal government is saying they are going to increase the fuel price by June the next year. To me, it's just a drama trying to set in, sensitize in Nigeria to see whether they will protest or there will be a reaction. We are, we are not likely to have, if government increase the price, it's just a normal increase in price. That is not the regulation. Not until when we have fully functional refinery, we will continue to subsidize. And let me tell you, the Dangote refinery, the, the, uh, the, the federal government is looking up to, to come up, may not likely to fulfill that regulation, the regulation strategy government is looking at. When we say the regulation, we have a system where we have different type of uh, refinery coming up to compete with each other. In a situation when a, a, just a single refinery coming up on stream to feed the nation, it's no longer a, 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 a deregulation, it's, not, it's no longer a competitive competitive environment. It's now a monopoly system. We are the same government will continue to fix the price to pay for the owner of the refinery or the management of the refinery. Now, if they are saying that they are going to deregulate for the masses, which masses are they are they deregulating for? On what on whose purpose the refineries have not been working for the last 50 years? or for the last 30 years, when a lot of money have been pumped into this system, we, the federal government has spent so much money, almost, almost 5 trillion naira has been spent on revamping the nation's refinery in the last 10 years. Yet, nothing has come up from it. Every government comes, come with different strategy of siphoning money, and telling us that they want to revive the refinery. All the four nations' refinery, none of them is functioning. We remember during Jonathan, we spent so much on refinery, nothing happened. Now this government came, we've been spending so much money since past seven or seven, seven years now. Nothing has come up. So on whose benefit federal government is saying they want to deregulate this sector? On whose benefit we are suffering? The Nigerian government will continue to spend so much money on, the, on, on subsidy until when we have a function, as I said earlier, refinery. Yes, we have small, small refinery coming up. 
that small small refinery has, and they have never made an impact we are expecting. Yes, a number of refineries will come up in the coming years, including that go to refinery, which all the expectations are on it that it's going to feed the country. It definitely is not going to feed the country alone. The owner of the country, uh, the, the owner of the refinery is looking outside the country to make his money. And if we have functional refinery, maybe we have maybe Kaduna, Porta Court, you know, we have two uh, in Porta Court, we have one in Worry. Now, if all this refinery come up, definitely, yeah, we can say we want to deregulate because there will be a subsidized price at that time. When you remove the cost of transportation, you remove the cost of uh, 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 cost. Um, uh, Nigeria Port Authority and all those things, you will see that there will be a competitive, competitive environment. That's what will come up. Yeah, so, now, when you so, say we want to deregulate at that time, we all, we will all be happy that, yes, we are ready to deregulate but, sir. Right now, Nigeria is not ready. So, so Mr. Ikundayo, so I, I want you to go further on the point that you made, that the claims by the Nigerian government that they are deregulating and they are ending the subsidy regime are all fake. Yes. They, it's all fake. And I don't know why government always come up with this noise of deregulation. I think when I started journalism 25 years ago, I started at the peak of campaigning for deregulation. I can tell you that since then, nothing has happened. We keep on. Oh, Mr. Ikundayo, can you hear? Oh, it's to increase the okay. price by a little margin. And this one too will come. We will increase the price by a little margin. And that will be the end of your regulation. You remember the one the federal government did, which was a partial regulation. The market bought to this idea. They really bought it to it. They were started importing. All of a sudden, we now discover that the only electricity that is importing is that the regulation after they have increased the price, taking that the market that will go into it, only to discover that they are asking it. Uh, All right. Um. Uh, and you want to have a dollar. How, how, where, where does it happen? So these are the challenges they are facing. And we are not ready. I keep on saying all these things that you are seeing, they are flagging up that they want to increase price to $350 or $300. It's just a fake, just to make sure that they increase the price. They are sensitizing us, they want to hear the reaction of Nigeria. And thank God the Nigerian Labour Congress, they have already mm. All right, uh, let's also, you know, talk about uh, some of the issues that you have raised. You talked about <laughs> the fact that we because have... we can continue mm. this way. Nigerians are tired. If we want to... I, 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 I am saying... There won't be any deregulation until we have functional refinery. The government will continue to go front and back. We can't deregulate on importation. We've been on this thing for 30 years. Nothing has happened. We keep on pumping money into campaign. We keep on pumping money into refinery. Nothing has happened. Now, if you remember, before Dango they funded this uh, or established the whole refinery, you remember, only Yara Duan, on $10 and Yara and on $10 and Dango they met together to buy a new refinery. When your passenger came, the fronted data, uh, um, when you had that, you remember uh, on that passenger, uh, uh, that country and uh, hotel dollar, they messed together, they want to buy, they wanted to buy uh, a dinner refinery. When, uh, when you had that came, they fronted this thing, and they wanted the whole, the whole, the whole, I mean, the whole plan. We thank God that that won't happen. If not, what we have today in Lagos at the uh, refinery, maybe it will have happened. But at the same time, if they have allowed private individual or private entity to acquire this refinery, possibly they will be on their street on the street today. Okay, so let's talk about Mr. Kundayo. They privatize this company, and that's what we be campaigning. Sell certain equity. Mr. Kundayo. Mr. Kundayo, let's talk about um, you know some of the issues that you have raised. You're saying that we're where we are today because our refineries are not functioning. And until we fix our refineries, then we will continue in this cycle. Uh, do you have an idea why our refineries are not functioning, despite all of the funds that we have invested in revamping the refineries? Which is, it's a useless system that it has never happened in any country in the world where a system is privatized and is fit to work. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Kundayo, can you hear us? To work. Look at how these folks are relying, taking money from several banks of Nigeria. I don't know. In fact, 
uh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sorry to use this. There's nothing we have done successfully in this country. Mr. Kundayo. Mr. Kundayo. We privatize this school. We privatize gen generation company. We privatize others, other entity in the private in the, in the power sector. Yet we have not achieved the desired results. Mr. Kundayo, can you hear us? They don't have money. They keep on going to. All right. uh, it might be a struggle having this conversation this morning. Uh, Kayode Kundayo, can you hear us clearly? It is them that. Yeah. Well. Um... You know, it's obvious that he has a lot to get off his chest. Of you know? course. <laughs> Maybe it's the issue that he can hear us. But because this is not the first time, like I mentioned, we're talking about, you know, the removal of failed subsidy or not to remove or how much we're spending, you know, subsidizing fuel for Nigerians. And, you know, the question still ongoing. Others would say, are we really subsidizing fuel? Who are we subsidizing fuel for? I mean, Select few is... and all of that. So, but you know, some of the issues that he's mentioned and he said, until we solve all of this problem, we will continue in this circle. And that's the issue of having our refineries. It does make a lot of sense, you know. You can't really you know, stop paying subsidies if you don't have refineries uh, you know, to refine the petrol down here. Because if you refine your crude oil down here, the crude oil will still, without your refineries, will still have to go to other countries to get refined and brought back to Nigeria. And, you know, that's not even going to be possible. That's, you know, you then will stop paying subsidy. If not, you know, a petrol cost will go as high as 350, 500 naira. But they know that they're not going to do that. And so they, every now and then, just throw those, um, um, you know, no, words they here. Know, there. They know that they need to get the refineries working or they don't know... Um, maybe they don't know that they need to get the refineries working I'm before sure removing I'm sure they you know, do. The Mr. Sakundayo, can you hear us now? Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. I don't even know that I'm off already. Yes, we, we <laughs> were trying to get your attention. Uh, I, I think we had some form of disconnection. But quickly, you mentioned that, you know, until we... Yeah. The only way we can get out of where we are right now as a country is that we have our refineries working, functional. Now, my, my question yes. is... Yes. How come the refineries are not functional? You've also said that a lot has been invested in terms of revamping uh, the refineries, the ones that are available. So what, what could be responsible? Why are our refineries not functional? The reason why the refineries are not working is because Nigeria has not taken it as, it's, as a business. And I keep on telling those ask me this question that until we privatize Nigeria refinery we won't have anything to come out of it I've, I've visited the refinery all the refinery we have in Nigeria that is the uh, Portacourt, the Wari, the Kaduna I've visited them, the way it, is, it was being, they were being wrong there is no private entity can be wrong and survive in that uh, in, 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 I mean in that uh, format until government sell the equity they have, possibly 60, 40. Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Hello? We yes. can hear you. Possibly 60, 40. I've been confessing for this thing for the last 10 years. Until we have that kind of uh, system, the general refinery will keep on being this format, and government will continue to try for money, and people continue to feed fat from this format we have. I bastards did his own. I remember when I was so young, 200 million was given to Tota to execute potato refinery to farm it at that time. At that period, nothing came out. All right, uh, Mr. Kondayo. Passenger came, came, put in the same money, came out. Jonathan yeah. came, put in the same money, nothing happened. Uh, Buari came now, put in the same money, bringing expatriates from abroad, a jeep. All sort of expected engineers to come and do something to refertilize it, we still having the same problem. Not until we privatize the Nigerian refinery, we keep on having the same problem. Okay. Well, um, Ms. Aikunda, I, I want to ask, um, because of course the news is saying that the government plans to give 5,000 naira to the poorest Nigerians and then go ahead with, you know, completely removing subsidy. And, and that's their plan. And that's, you know, the way that's been stated in the news. Um, but I, I want, you know, your thoughts on, you know, if they go ahead um, and actually stop paying subsidy, um, do you 
what do you think would happen and what would be the likely cost of petrol uh, for Nigerians? Sir, let me first of all say the talk about the 5,000 naira they want to give to Nigeria. It's an insult on Nigerians. That they, uh, for how long are they going to spend 5,000? What will 5,000 buy? It's totally an insult on Nigeria. That's my personal opinion. Now, if you give me 5,000 naira today, it can't take me to the evening when I finish spending it. Is that what will take me for the next one year or two years when another one will come up? Is that a strategy? Whoever must have suggested that. I don't know what, what the thinking of government. Now, I want to ask you just an example. When during COVID, government was, was distributing money to some people, we journalists, we had to investigate those who actually got this money. I didn't see anybody to say he collected 5,000 naira. Now, to me, it's another way of siphoning money from the system to small click of government to eat. Now, that money may not make any impact on anything. And when you calculate how much it's likely to spend on that 5,000 naira, we were talking about trillions or billions of naira. Whereby, if we even use that billion to build a small micro refinery, we make an impact. A 10,000 barrel refinery, refinery today costs $1 billion. Now, all this money we've been spending, wasting, on refining all these things. If government doesn't want to uh, uh, release any equity, we will have built a new refinery since past 10 years. A 10,000 barrel per day refinery costs $1 billion. Are we saying we can't afford $1 billion since all this year? Now, but by the time they give 5,000 naira to an individual, they will build it up on the fair price. Now, by the time they build it on fair price, government, government says they want to increase it to 350 naira per liter. Now, on what benefit we now benefit, even the masses they are protecting, I mean they are protecting, what benefit will they bring out for them? What impact will they make in their life? To me, it's a waste of money, waste of time, and they are ridiculing the Nigerian masses. That they are so poor, they can't afford 5,000 naira in a year. When I heard the news, it's, I was so bitter. How can government propose 5,000 naira to how many Nigerians? To how many Nigerians? They said the poorest. How do they determine the poorest? The people in the village? All right. Or people in Lagos? It, it, it sounds very much. Have poorest, poorest in the in, it's so ridiculous, my brother. It sounds very much like you know the same format of, of uh, you know looking for new excuses to you know siphon funds from the Nigerian economy money. without yes, any actual it's effect. A it's, a, it's a strategy to siphon money from the system yeah. to certain click people to, to become richer. Absolutely. And that has been the strategy they have been using for the past 30 years to siphon money when they are doing campaign for deregulation. They want to start again to collect money to siphon to a group of people. I've grown up to know. Hello? Hello? Yeah, um, I, apologies, but we, we may have to wrap up the conversation here. Um, th there's obviously so much, you know, that needs to be said with regards to this conversation and the idea of petrol subsidy. Um, so we, we look forward to speaking with you again and we would like to get further details from you and more clarity on Nigeria's petrol subsidy. You know, we may want to call it, the, you know, fraud, as, it's, as it sounds from what you Thank described. You. Thank you. I'm back. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Have a, have a very interesting day. Stay with us. We'll move away from petrol. Now we're going to be talking healthcare um, in the face of a pandemic and many other health challenges in Nigeria. How much more development is needed and where are we currently? We'll get into that after this break.